Now the first thing I've done also is to uh, prepare a few sheets as reminders. So one is the field equipment checklist. And maybe we can uh, distribute this as paper copies or it will be on the uh, Dropbox site. Dropbox And I put together a field checklist. It's, it's essentially to make sure you do everything that you need to on the site. So, but most importantly, we didn't really focus on this, but it's to map in your field book the locations of the electrodes, the locations of roadways and things like that. <coughs> if there's an electrode that's offline or in concrete, it's worth recording that. <coughs> and after the field geophysicist comes back, the person that's in charge comes back from the field we take pictures of our field book. <laughs> then everybody has the information and we save that in the folder on the computer network that we're working on. <laughs> And then, as I was said earlier, take pictures. Don't be afraid to take more pictures. Then you'll remember the site. You remember where your iris box was, the cable direction. And then I put another one together, the care and maintenance of your iris syscal system. I highlighted in red some important things. Don't leave your chargers connected to the, the chargers for the internal batteries. Once the battery is charged, you should disconnect it, the charger. So, and be very careful connecting your external battery, one cable at a time. Don't bring the two ends together because I've seen people spark them and that burns out the cables. So I have to wire joint lounge in it, and yeah, one of and you need a man able to cool jeans, the quad video of time, but also to a bit of a long mess, and you know, and the bar. And one of our very experienced geophysicists has connected the red to negative and the black to positive twice in his career. Uh, the game joins in a geophysicist in Yashime, and look, Marby joined with my card, Marby joined with it. And it shuts the system down inside there is an automatic or there is a an electronic component that burns so have somebody watching you just to confirm that you're connecting it up properly and finally take care of those cables you're, you're dependent on those cables. And there also seems to be a persistent problem about click. 
Right. Have to hear the click. So you have to keep the box and this. You can't come in like that. It's got to be. So let's just go over evaluating the data again. And these are the same slides I showed you the other day. But we'll look at the Yugo data and maybe the uh, uh, GTI data, the polytechnical data. So, so this is the Yugo data here. The winner Schlumberger data. And all of it's there. You can see in the lower corner it says 1530. All the data are there. You can bring it up on your computer if you want to and then follow it. Does everybody have the Yugo data? There's a folder on here that has it in, if you want to pass that around. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll risk that one. Thank you. 
So it's you go underscore E W You go underscore E W that W S underscore eight meters. Should be west to east, shouldn't it? It's west to east. Yeah, I keep on forgetting that. That's all right. It's the east-west line. I reversed them. It should be west to east. Yeah, Does everybody have it on? Who doesn't have it on? Everybody's good. Yeah, You don't have it on. You do. So when, when they open, they ask for like information for update information. Just say no. Yes. No, no. If at the time it's she cannot open. She said you can update it if you want, but just say for no for them. I'm working with an old one too. Mm -hmm. So there's the version we're working with, 402.02, .02, and that's fine. And you can see that under the help about menu. And you can check you can check for an update just using that. Help my check update about So just go and click on row here. And you should see that. Can you go back again? Okay. Uh, Max, is there any way you can plot that on a log scale? Yeah. Oh my. So at least for what I'm doing this for the plotting of pseudo sections in this program, you're plotting it on a linear scale. You well, plot it on a log scale. Yeah, I think there's a clip. There's a um, an item you can click. Everybody see that? But the reason. So the reason this one looks so bad, you can see that there are some very high resistivities. Where's your pointer to? See these very high resistivities? <coughs> those are those. See how high the numbers are? <coughs> these should be down around <coughs> less than 10,000 10, kilo ohms per meter. 
So we know right away there are some bad points. Is everybody up? Is everybody there? Yeah, I'm Kevin, it's good. They're installing software still. Oh, okay. So if we go to processing, processing will go up our main. And then exterminate bad data points. Exterminate bad data points. So you can see there's the bad data points right there. Oh my, did I, Magama did I go and doing that? Up at very high resistance. Resistive, yeah, yeah, resistive. Yeah, sure, yeah. And this data set looked very good. And did I set it at the young gang? Because it's all clumped together. This is the Z, Magama, she. Magama, she. Kevin. Do you want to get the other computer? They could use the other computer. The one that we use in the field. Uh, are they pretty close to being ready to go? Or is uh, oh, I see you've got that to there. Okay. Continue on, but you can see again that you can click on the different items. If I just click on the label at the top, you can see the really high ones. So that was row here I clicked on. Row, row, I got it. The deviation. Deviation, deviation from it. So the deviation should be below 20 at the worst. 20 hours here, many deviations. And there are some bad ones here at 26,000. And maybe we'll see SP as the self potential. Self potential, yeah. It looks all right. It's about a half a volt, <coughs> minus half a volt to plus half a volt. So this is from the power lines and other stuff around. But but that could be a measure of whether you have a bad point if there was some really high SP. And this is V A uh, this is V M N. V M N So this is a pretty good data set, they're all positive. You can see they're all positive. It would be below zero. We can show you one with them below zero. You know, I'm tired. Yeah, 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 yeah. And similarly with IAB, so this is the current that was injected. And you can see the levels are over here. You can turn off levels if you're trying to understand it better. But so you just have to click like for level, I don't even know if you can see anything disappear there. Yeah. You see them disappearing? So you have the lines are disappearing? disappearing yeah. That's only if you're really trying to study the data set closely. But but the winner Schlumberger is, re is usually a very good data set because the injection current is outside of the potential voltage. Okay. Are we good back there? Kevin? Are we, we good? You just have to get... Okay. Okay, get the Yogo or Yugo loaded on. Do they have the right data? <coughs> I just don't want to leave anybody behind. Okay, so let's go processing. <coughs> Exterminate bad data point. Look at it again. We know we want to remove those ones. We could do it on this screen. By clicking on the points, remember. Next 
But we're going to let the automatic processing do it. So the automatic, automatic filter. Automatic processing. Okay, go there. Now, if you click. If you clicked on the uh, expand window, maximize window, you'll be able to see these numbers down here. I'm a If you don't click on that, you'll have trouble seeing those. And I'll click on the So how many data were removed? Six. 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 Right? Mm -hmm. So it's a very good data set. Hardly anything was removed. That's fine. I was just moving out of the way so they could see. <coughs> if we go back and look at exterminate bad data points, now all those ones that were way out here, <laughs> they're gone. And if we look at this row, so see the highest number we have now is 1400 on the scale. How we are cloud sheet there and yeah, it looks like, Devin, you only have a choice of, uh, of uh, linear scale for you. So to, to delete the data points that are obviously bad, we use the auto-filtering option? Yep. Or, and then, so once we've done that, we've done the auto-filtering, uh, and we, we click OK, do we need to go and say, I want to only keep the selected data to finalize that process, or does it delete them automatically? If you go down your file, you'll see there are unchecked. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. So then, those are the six that were removed. <laughs> well, they're, they've been unselected, but they have not been removed from the data set. Uh, no. So, uh, if you want to maintain your original data set, you just keep it like that, and then you turn those back on if you want to do anything with them. So then later, when you write stuff out. You actually, you know, write out everything that's selected. When I write it, you're gonna, you're gonna no, no. <coughs> if I export, it will only export the uh, the ones that are checked. So it's only acting on those. So in this process, we'll never actually delete rows. We'll only unselect the rows. We do sometimes, but with these ones, I have. See if I can find one that was uh, removed. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any in there, did you? I'm just looking for the uh, unchecked data. There they are. So see, these are all unchecked. And the deviations are all high. Whoop, are all high here. <laughs> and you can see that the currents are all very small uh, right there. So if you want, you can save this data set. You could save it as... <coughs> Auto filter, yeah. So I would normally say this is underscore auto. Uh, 
waste. Yeah, because I've already saved it. So you would say yes, but I've already saved it. That's this one here. So if I open that file, So this is my saved file auto, and you can see that the points are still removed on it. You could you could eliminate that those points by going to selection and say and say delete the ignored data. The ignored data the little area. I sure yes. Okay. And they're gone. So you could save this again if you want save as same the same thing. So I've removed those Selection points. Delete. Uh, delete, ignore data. Delete, ignore data. But if you export and save, it removes the points. So you want to do UBC? What's that? So now we want to prepare the data. This data set's very good. We don't need to do any more processing. I'm processing the lower. So we're going to prepare it to go into UBC. UBC is one minute. So we go to file. Fine. And we're going to export and save. Export and save. It's full of And we go across to UBC. UBC. And then it's DCIP or DC in 2D. DC resistivity inversion 2D. <laughs> And if we click on that, and then you can call it as you wish. Let's see. You go. So I've already re I've already uh, saved this. So it's easy for me to just click on that and use the same name, right? So I use the same name, you go EWWS8M, and I underscore auto. Auto, auto, underscore auto. That reminds me that I did auto filtering on this data set. I'm auto filtering on Harris Rob. Save, you have to save, no? Save. And then you save, yeah. Except mine's going to say it already is there. No, it created it, so it just wrote over top of it. So just say OK. So here's that directory where I saved it. And the UBC export always saves a topography file separately. Here, here's what the topography file has in it. Right now. Probably actually better when it's smaller. I don't know what the second zero stands for. What's the zero stand for there, David? So you have 72 electrodes? It's just for one position. What's that? I think, this, I think the second one ends up being an unused number so that it can load it in efficiently as an n by 2 array. Okay. And it's got all the positions and their elevations. So we haven't had to put elevations into this data set because it's all essentially the same elevation. And here's what the UBC data set looks like. So we've got 
electrode position, 0, 24, 8, and 16. These are the MN. These are the AB. And this is the apparent resistivity, is that right? And this is the... What's that? Oh, this is the voltage and this is the current? The voltage and STD. What's that? That's the standard deviation. So where's the current coming in there? The way that this program works, it, it's the voltage normalized by the current. Ah, okay. Yeah, we always invert V over I. So this is really a resistance. V equals IR? Yeah. yeah. So this is a resistance in this column, and this is the standard deviation. Standard deviation, I would be You don't have to worry about that, but I'm just showing yeah, it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just quickly show you that if I was saving, if I was exporting and saving to Res2D in, this window comes up. So this is a different program. And I just take the defaults and save it as res 2 d in. So it also saves as resistance, not apparent resistivity. Resistance in the next The apparent resistivity just uses the K factor. Right? And the SIMPEG software, UBC software, do the calculations of apparent resistivity for you, as does the res 2 d in. The program does the calculation of the program. Uh, recently, what did you do that? Can you show that again, please? The things that you did recently. Oh, you mean the export and save? Export and save. So the national organization has res 2 d in, I think. That's the program. A different program? It's, it's not free, it's expensive. And, There is a free version, but you can only do a limited number of iterations with it. I'll show you what that file looks like. That. That's what the res 2 d in file looks like. Very similar. It's got the number of uh, electrodes in the quadrupole, then it's got the positions x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y, and it has that same number there, which is the uh, resistance. And it looks like they don't do the standard deviation. So back we go here. Um, so let's go and do you go SN. WS 10 meter. So open up the bin file. Go SN WS 10 meter. Stop 
if you open last file, it should go to the directory that you were working in. So do you remember we had trouble with the sequence file? Sequence file never got dropped. Oh, can't get to it. So once again, we put in a sequence file that was not the true separation between the electrodes. Hey, time and spacing and time and time are one. So it looks like there's eight meter spacing instead of ten meter spacing. The ten meter side should be that. You remember what we did for that? Processing. Processing, eh? Uh, modify spacing. Modify spacing. We were going to multiply. So now we have to make the spacing 10 instead of 8. So what's, what's our multiplication? What's our multiplication factor to make the a number 10 instead of 8? 5 and 4, which is in decimal places? 1.25? And we're going to do that. Everybody following along? We're doing this from zero. Okay, and watch the numbers have changed to factors of 10. Magic. Okay, so now we have 0, 30, 10, 20. Does everybody understand? Yeah. And you had to select multiply. Multiply was select all of them, not click all Did you select all of them at once, or was it just the first few? No, it, it adjusts everything. I gave it this, the, the shift for every single electrode on that screen. Mm -hmm. Back to that screen again. Okay, yeah. And then modify spacing. So I'm just changing the X spacing. I increment spacing by one and a quarter of what it was. Okay, so I can select them all and I go from You say from zero. So you want it from the very first point. Right. So whatever the end is, but I uh, the drop down menu just gives me zero. Well, I mean, I could choose from 16 or something like that if I wanted to, right? Put 16. That's not intuitive. No, I agree it's not intuitive, but it's a formula. And you have to multiply, not increment. You have to hit multiply. It's just easier to put them in manually. It seems to do more. There doesn't seem to be an easy way to do it. No, it's, it's brutal. I totally agree. Okay. Yep. Okay, so at this point, after you've done the shift, I always save the file. And I save it. Save the file. Again, I have to go back to my. I save it in the same directory. <coughs> And I save it as corrected. Okay, so that way you know you had to shift it, you've corrected it. Then you say save. I've already saved it, so I'm not going to replace it. Okay, so now we can take a look at the file. Let's look at the row. Now. See now how there is a very bright red orange spot over here, but look, the top numbers are only a thousand ohm meters. So the top ohm meter of this is off. So my means are only on three guys, really. So that that suggests that suggests that it's a pretty good data set. 
Over here you can see that the data is all focused in a tight area with a little bit of data outside. So now let's go to exterminate bad data point. And once again, there's some locations where maybe the current didn't get injected properly. The, these ones may be questionable too. Because they're outside the stacked area. So let's see what automatic filtering will do. Automatic filtering by local lens or LTT down. Is everybody up with me? So it removed how many points? And the points. 32. 32? So that means it's a pretty good data set. Let's look what exterminate the data point says. There's still a little bit of stuff over here, which may be questionable data. Let's look at what the deviations are. Well, they're all under 20, but maybe we could cut out something from 10 and above. Let's just, we'll go to filtering value. Filtering value in the bottom, man. Yeah, that value in the bottom. So there's a few row values that are in the very low end there. <coughs> Let's see what I did before for this data set. So I use row 20. So what I said from looking at this screen here is that maybe anything below this is 10 ohm meters that's 20 ohm meters so I said let's take out these points here and I do that on this processing screen again filtering value so I go down to the row and I say the minimum can be 20. Minimum 20, what you like, man? And I say apply. Apply, name, man. And now you see we've moved it, removed another seven points. Not just seven points, now go. Yeah, we're up. Okay, talk about it. And there's no row, go. Let's say it highlighted. Let's say out which row, I think that point again. And now it's far more stacked together. It's still. This means that the surface materials are highly variable on the resistivity. So I have to be on the hardy. The minimum is set to hardy, you know. But we can accept that. And I like having a lot. Maybe this point is no good. You could click on it and get rid of it. And I like having a lot. So click on it and like that. Yeah. We're not going to for this data set. And so again. Now I want to save this. Yeah, save by me. Unfortunately, my window doesn't go automatically to the right spot. Oh, cut that out. Max, can you look at the points that uh, you have got rid of and see if there's like a common electrode or anything like that? Yeah. Any of that? Yeah. Okay. I would, it would do that after. Uh, sequences, data, so here's what I called that file to remind me what I did. I said row 20 plus. Row 20 plus, 20, and there's no time for 20 that took away. You tie a button, you go to the one that MRC tied it. So I took out everything below 20 uh, ohm meters. Okay, and so you can save that file. If I save it, we are And I've already done it, so I'm not going to. You can see there's one point that's been removed right there. 
it actually had a zero measurement for the voltage. This one had a negative, it's been removed. And it was a pretty small current, just 10 uh, milliamps. So now we go through the same thing. We're going to export and save as UBC. And hopefully yours is going to the right directory, mine isn't. So I saved mine in the UBC file, and you can see there, I saved the one without removing row 20 plus, and I saved the one, oh, no, I didn't. I just saved the, uh, the final one there. So you can say yes and save it. And I don't even know how, how does that get right into SimPeg then? Have you guys been setting that up, or do they do it? What do you mean? Um, how do they end up with the data to interpret? Oh, uh, it exports it in USB, this format, and the notebooks are already configured to read it in this format. So they do it from their computer? Yeah, so what I end up doing, once you've, you've output it as the uh, DC inf 2D, Stand up is I just, I just make a copy of it in basically the assets where we have the data sets, okay. and then it just auto, yeah. Do you want to explain that to me? Or well, is that yeah, I was just going to do it when, okay. when it was my turn. So. Yeah, so Devin will explain how to get that data set into the SIMPEG, uh, uh, the SIMPEG data set, or, or uh, the SIMPEG program in the next phase of this of the talk. Uh, you probably don't have the GTI but I, I'm just going to show them. I don't think we have to go through it. They can do it on their own and then ask questions. What's that? Yep. So I'm going to quickly show the uh, GTI data. GTI stands for what again? GTI. Okay. So this is the 10 meter spaced winter Schlumberger data set. And it sort of looks pretty good. It, the resistivity is uh, highest resistivity is 1300 so, ohm meters. And if we look at the data set on the exterminate bad data point. That looks pretty good. There's some stuff in here that's probably not good data. And then we've got these ones that come out as zero down here, which need to be removed. So if you want, you can look at individual data points to see what is right or wrong with them. But generally, you'll just use the auto filtering. So it took out 67 data points, but look, it's a nice compact <coughs> data set again with some high shallow resistivities, <coughs> well, higher shallow resistivities. <coughs> And the pole dipole doesn't show properly in this program. I can show it to you, but what type what they draw? Uh, there is the original data set. Yeah, there we go. So you can't even figure it out. Okay. 
So the pole dipole data set normally when you collect your pole data, uh, pole dipole data, you would have actually I should have put that this wire would hook into the iris at electrode 36 and it would go into C. A. I'm a iris go check that. Iris, those that time I go iris go check me. But because we didn't have a lot of wire to stretch it out, she oh can't open wire. Maybe she off. I I cheated the system. I explained this the other day. The man just said that I tell me. And we hooked it to electrode one. One of the check I. So the problem is we have to do a, some massaging to make the interpretation packages understand the positioning of everything and the apparent uh, resistivity K factor. Oh, oh look, it did come up with something. So, this is, uh, what's the Myanmar word for, for useless? This is not, not applicable. This is, yeah. Useless step. Because it doesn't, it, it thinks that G or that electrode one is at zero meters, one at zero machine, or at seven hundred, because I ran it from seven hundred, and I can't. What's this show? So at least it shows. The problem is that this data may not be bad. It's just because it thinks that electrode one is at seven hundred meters. So we have to look through this data set a little closer before we get a usable data set. So this was a set of slides I had the other day. Whoop. We didn't start on this a second. Yeah, I could have made it here. So this uh, presentation will, will be up on the uh, Dropbox site. The presentation is on Dropbox site. But this is the sequence of things that we went through. Right, bad data, noisy data. So all of this information that we just went through, and there's a step-by-step -step figures that <laughs> show you <laughs> what to do. I think what did we work on? I think we worked on the uh, park data or Kobita. So this is the data we removed just by saying no uh, apparent resistivities above or below, uh, let's say, 80 or 90 are allowed in the data set. And then filtering by value, that's what we just looked at. You can change the values down here. And then, and then, and then hit apply. Line <coughs> Then remember how we removed bad electrodes? We could remove the bad electrode, if we want to call it bad, that was moved off the road at Lugo. Uh, and then the inserting topography, we haven't had a site where we've done that yet, but remember, <coughs> you go to insert topography and you do it in topography process. So you just have to enter numbers where you know the elevation. So, so let's say you know that from electrode 1 to 10, it's on a slope, and then maybe this is 25 and 40. So if you just you can just take the elevation here, the elevation here, 
elevation here and here and interpolate? Is there anybody that doesn't understand this? This. It's like a So what do they do with the elevation number? <coughs> they enter each elevation number into the electrode that it's at. So here's zero, 50, uh, 80, or 90, I can't see, and uh, 140. And then you choose interpolation. Interpolation, we have an array of UAV up. So it interpolates between the known points, and there's the slope it would do for that. So here, I'll show you just by doing a fake one here. <coughs> okay, so I go to processing, processing insert topography, insert topography, and if I know at 700 it was 10 meters, and maybe it was 15 meters here, 20. Hey, let's talk to you about what we have. Elevation will take that. Go more than there, how's it going to be? What? Make me tell this, it's going to be what? Let me tell us. Okay, so I've gone through the whole data set and I say interpolate. So there's the slope. Well, the slope to do that. Did everybody follow that? Yeah. So those are the elevations. So now when I export this, export let's say I export this to, okay, so now when I export this to UBC, and I'll just call this one It's going to you go UBC test, okay. It, it doesn't like the fact that there's some negative resistivity there, but that's fine. Let's see. So this is the one that I just transferred there. Oh, well, that's interesting. It didn't transfer the... Uh, We'll have to look at that one. For some reason, <laughs> it's not exporting the elevation in the UBC option. Oh. Um. Like it's like that instead, it's just a placeholder? What's that? No, there's, there's actually like, uh, I think there's an export part of the option, isn't there? Uh, for exporting the res yeah. in, yes. Yeah, so if I go to, if I go export and save to res in, when you go, I can insert topography from data. Yes, yeah, so when you go insert topography, then there's also an option once you've made your topography to go save TXT file. Okay, just a second. Uh, Let's go back and look. It also load a TXT oh, file. Oh, well, it didn't save it, did it? Yeah. So, sorry, where was that? Uh, just a little to the left. Up, just the bottom left corner of that window. So one of them you could load the topography, and then I'm guessing you could save it as a TXT. Oh uh, yeah, I guess you have to do that. I'm not sure. So we think we're, we'll check and get back to you, but we think that you have to save a separate text file with the elevation. Elevation for the UBC. Yeah, we'll save the elevation for the UBC export. We'll get back to you about that. Okay. So that's it for me. Let's take a, a break. Break by since I'm seeing a lot of closing eyes. Break the aim Oh well it's only a Mac. This is such exciting stuff, I can't understand how anybody would fall asleep during it.
some point everything is just sort of marginally incremental. Yeah. But I guess I, I felt that when you load the data or when you when you first run the cell that says let's make a mesh, um, it auto populates or I'm sorry, yeah. There's, a, there's basically there's a part where you either load up the data or you run that cell. And it spits out a suggestion for what you should be making, like the size yeah, of the Yeah, for this one, it was 60,000. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe that's overdoing it. I, I don't know what the criteria was. I'm guessing Soggy made it. But those, the choice of those numbers were deliberate. They were deliberate to make sure that we were accurately modeling yeah. physics. Yeah. So, Error on conservatism. Sure. So. I mean, maybe we can cut it down to, to 40,000 or something like that. But when you're talking about reducing it to, you know, 20% or less, the suggested discretization based on accurately modeling the physics, it's, then you start to go, okay, is there some, there's some stuff? And I, I'm wondering. Well, we'll see. No. I've got it running <laughs> two cells per electrode spacing. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I looked that, at... Uh, that's about as low as... Well, I look at my inversion results and, I mean, you know, I, 